There are now divided opinions within the ruling alliance regarding the approach to the upcoming local level elections scheduled around mid-May this year. The ruling partners, Maoist Center and Unified Socialist, want to keep the alliance intact and go to the polls jointly, while the Nepali Congress more or less wants to go to the elections single-handedly, even as the party is yet to declare an official stand. In the meantime, Finance Ministry has released a budget of 8.1 billion rupees for election expenses. Good morning, I am Bipashna Tamang and these are the headlines of the hour. Parties of the ruling bloc in favour of continuing the alliance in the run-up to local level elections. The Pali Congress yet to fully decide. UML says MCC should not clash with national interest. Finance Ministry approves a budget of 8 billion 110 million rupees for the upcoming local level election. Election Commission expedites simultaneous preparations. Russia bombed a TV tower in Ukraine's capital and bring rockets on the city of Kharkiv as Moscow intensified its bombardment of Ukraine in urban areas. And Manchester City is true to their last eight of the FA Cup. Tottenham misery continue as they crash out with a loss against Middlesbrough. The ruling alliance that had reached a verge of collapse over the MCC debacle was saved after the ratification of the agreement from the parliament. In this report, we look at the alliance's strategies with the approaching local level elections. The ruling alliance of Nepali Congress, Maoist Center, Unified Socialist, Janata Samajwadi and Rashtriya Janamorcha almost broke over disagreements regarding the ratification of the Millennium Challenge Corporation, Nepal Compact. However, the alliance agreed to endorse the agreement with an addition of interpretative declaration. Now, the alliance have begun focusing on the elections scheduled for May. Nepali Congress, analysts say, is calculating its stake while the other parties are in favour of saving the alliance through the elections. Whether Nepali Congress decides to run the elections as part of the alliance would matter the most for the future of the alliance. Meanwhile, following the endorsement of MCC agreement, Rashtriya Janamorcha, that has one seat at the parliament, have quit the alliance but have maintained their support to the incumbent government. While it is uncertain what Nepali Congress that leads the alliance would do in the elections, the party has well understood it would be difficult for them to win government leadership if they stand in the elections alone. Meanwhile, main opposition CPN UML chair KP Sharma Oli has said the implementation of the U.S. Grant Assistance Program Millennium Challenge Corporation MCC should not come in contradiction with national interests during its implementation. Speaking during a press conference held in the capital yesterday, Oli suggested that further debacle and division regarding the already endorsed agreement would be counterproductive. The main opposition has been obstructing parliamentary sessions for some time now, which analysts call the party's attempt to weaken the parliament. The House of Representatives session convenes today, which is the first session since the ratification of the U.S.-funded Millennium Challenge Corporation Nepal Compact on Sunday. According to the Federal Parliament Secretariat, the House session is scheduled to convene at 1 p.m. today. The Parliament had ratified the MCC bill last Sunday and had called for the next meeting for today. The business advisory for today's House session has already been announced as Prime Minister Shebahadur Deoba is all set to present the report of the Information Commission at the House meeting today. The Parliament Secretariat has also informed that Minister for Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation Prem Ali is also likely to present two bills related to Nepal Civil Aviation Act. The Ministry of Finance has approved a budget of 8 billion 110 million rupees for the upcoming local level election. The approved budget is, however, less by almost 840 million rupees from what was proposed by the Election Commission. 
Based on the commission schedule, the final list of voters will be published on 27th of March, which will be followed by printing of the ballot papers. The commission has expedited preparations to hold the local level elections on 13th of May. So far, 80 political parties have registered themselves for the polls. The commission has also begun process for the procurement of 57 different materials required for the election. Likewise, the Commission is currently also working on formulating the election directives. The Commission has al also already sent a draft of Election Code of Conduct to the Ministry of Law for review. The Commission has directed the government to finalize on the appointment and appraisals of election staff by 29th of March. The Commission has issued a 24-point directive to ensure the polls are fair and independent and has sent a 23-point directive to the government for election management. The Commission has urged the government to ensure all voting population are vaccinated against COVID-19 by 23rd of April. Nepal Electricity Authority currently has been importing electricity from India to meet demands. This is in contrast to the period between September to November last year where Nepal had a surplus of 500 megawatt of electricity per day. The failure to begin hydropower projects compatible to the country's geography has resulted in the inconsistent production and the loss of billions of rupees each year in power import. More in this report. During the monsoon season, when the flow of water is higher, production of electricity goes up in the country. Most of Nepal's hydropower projects are of run-of-the-river nature that depends on the flow of water in the rivers. Production rate hence differs heavily between monsoon and winter seasons. Nepal is compelled to import electricity from India during winter due to low productivity and higher demand. The Nepal Electricity Authority has said Around September last year, 50 million units of electricity worth 5 billion rupees have gone to waste. India has so far only agreed to buy 39 megawatts of electricity. On contrary, during off-seasons, Nepal is compelled to purchase up to 590 megawatts of electricity from India. Nepal's current production stands at around 700 megawatts, while the existing infrastructures have a capacity of producing up to 2,000 megawatts. According to the authority, demand for electricity at present reaches up to 1,522 megawatts during the evening time. The authority has been fulfilling this demand by using 775 megawatts produced by one of the river projects, 157 megawatts by private sector, and 590 megawatts by importing from India. Lack of political leadership and vision has caused for loss of electricity during peak season and billions of rupees each year in power import. Policymakers have failed to focus on raising domestic production and selling surplus energy during peak production season. Time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. What's it, what should be done for uninterrupted supply of electricity for all? The options option A, sustainable project. Option B, expand infrastructures. And option C, affordable price. The voting is on. Type any WS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. In our public voice segment, we had asked locals in several provinces what should be done to make the curriculum in local levels effective. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. How को परिस्थिति अनुसार तेज अनुसार को पाठ्यक्रम बनाए दिनों बारे में भाषा उसको धर्म उसको संस्कृति पहचान करेगा व्यवहारिक टाइप की शिक्षा से शिक्षा नीति से लागू करना स्वाक्यू बने विद्यार्थी अरुला इस साल जूनियर किसी को पाठ्यक्रम निर्माण करने पड़ेगा विज्ञान को सहयोग में बनाना Sports News. The Pass Super League is the first franchise football league in the country. The league's second edition is to kick off on 9th of April and clubs have begun preparations to participate in the tournament this year as well. However, due to unclear player transfer rules, disputes have surfaced between clubs of Nepal's Super League and the A-Division League. More in this report. 
Jhapa FC that is participating in the Nepal Super League announced Manang Mashangdi's captain Anjan Bista as marquee player. This announcement was followed by official statements from eight A-Division League clubs, including Manang Mashangdi opposing the decision. The press release highlights players registered for A Division will mandatorily need an approval before joining any other club. The Super League organized by Nepal Sports and Event Management, that is to kick off in 9th of April, has already classified 242 players. The tournament is also to coincide with ANFA's Gold Cup that will take place out of Valley and, during the same time, A Division League champions Machindra will participate at the AFC Cup, which is certain to affect player management. The Nepal Super League, that began since last year, players say, has been a good support to them and the sector. However, conflict in ANFA's calendar has caused hassles this time around. NSL has made a release letter compulsory for enlistment in the auction. In the scenario, A Division League clubs have the luxury to keep its players for the Gold Cup. However, sports enthusiasts warn A Division League might be overshadowed in future as NSL has been providing players lucrative offers, among others, and call for ANFA to better manage tournaments in the country. And that's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.